on. There we are. And um, yeah, all right. So I think I got everything done. So, um, so good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> I am, um, okay, so, so I guess before we get started, I'm going to tell you that what I do here is we'll record um, this and, and it's on Facebook forever, I hope for anybody to see. But then after the fact, I go and I edit this for it to go on the radio. So I cut all of this stuff out. So there is some after editing that I do just for just for clarification. So I get to talk to Dr. Bonita Co this morning, all the way. Good morning, Michael. All the way from you're in D.C. or where are you now? The, in the Maryland DC area, yep. Yeah. And um and she used to be here, right here in Cleveland, Ohio. And um and for, for a long time, you, for a long yes, yes. And those of you tuning in from wherever you are, she has changed her practice up. And so we get to hear a little bit about this today. So tell us, um, tell us what's going on with you first off. So um, for um, people in Cleveland now, I'm a, an internal medicine physician for, ooh, I think I'm in my 25th year. Um, I'm from Cleveland. So I went to school in Cleveland and lived there for a long time and um, um, moved back to the DC area. I went to medical school at Howard University College of Medicine, so I'm familiar with the D.C. area. I was back in Cleveland practicing, um, trained at Cleveland Clinic, um, worked in various kind of practices in Cleveland. Then I had my own private practice in Cleveland, went back on staff at Cleveland Clinic, and then moved back to the, the D.C. area. Then I was at GW, um, MedStar, and then most recently at Johns Hopkins. And I decided I wanted to get out of the rat race in primary care. It's just I wanted to do something different. So the COVID-19 pandemic has been a blessing and a curse for not just myself, but for many people. Mm -hmm. I have found just talking to my patients over the last three years, a lot of people, including myself, have taken the opportunity, it kind of has, has thrust us into doing things that a lot of people have put off and it kind of forced us to reevaluate what we're doing. And I have had a lot of people who started doing things that they were hesitant to do, putting off doing, and they were kind of had to jump into it. And they, a lot of people said, oh, I should have done this a long time ago. Right. And right. I have one patient, one young lady, this was in 2020. Believe it or not, she's like, this has been the best year of my life. Because a lot of people started fulfilling their dreams and things that they thought they couldn't do. And in healthcare, um, this whole thing of telemedicine we have been trying to do it for 10 or 15 years. This is nothing new, but the insurance companies wouldn't pay us to do it. Oh, wow. So just like anything it comes down to money, mm -hmm. but 2020, they had no choice. And so at the time I was at Johns Hopkins. And so when the governor of Maryland, you know, had the shut down, just like many states did, that was on a Wednesday. And it just so happens at Johns Hopkins, we were going to shift to doing a lot more video visits and telemedicine anyway. So we have the software going, lots of places have the infrastructure and the software, we just weren't using it because we couldn't bill for the services. And you can't, you can bill the patient, but patients weren't ready to pay for that. Mm hmm um, I will say though, but Kaiser has been doing it for many years, but Kaiser is a closed system. So that's all built into their system. A lot of insurance companies have been doing 
video visits, but within their system. So like on the weekend, if you have a, a private insurance through your uh, um, employer, a lot of insurance companies, you know, the nurse on call, doctor on call with your insurance on the weekend, they were, they've been doing video visits, but that's with your insurance benefits. But, you know, so we were, the governor of Maryland did the shutdown on Wednesday. We were doing video visits on Friday. Wow. We were ready and we haven't stopped. And now that patients see the benefits of video visits, they now trust it is a valuable um, just as good delivery of health care for for many things people that people want that service and but, so but what um, about seniors I mean or, or the digital divide as we always hear it now that's what you got to talk to your congress people about. <laughs> but believe I mean who doesn't have one of these right 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 if you have one of these you can have a video visit and like with my own mom she's in Cleveland she goes to, at her Cleveland clinic video visit I'm in Maryland I dial into I she's in the room with her doctor I can set, I can start her video visit. We can connect on her phone in the room with the doctor. I'm in her video visit with her. Oh, wow. So seniors can do it. And seniors can work this phone. <laughs> well, you know what? I do know that um, I have a friend and his mother has, I don't know if it's neuropathy in her fingers where she can't. The touch screens don't work for her and she's visually challenged. So, you know, some people do have issues with the phone too. Oh, so it doesn't mean that we're yeah. going to replace in-person visits. Oh no, I, I get um, But, and the other thing is telephone visits. Mm. But we got it. Insurance companies don't want to pay for that. So yeah. during the pandemic, all that changed. Okay. All that changed. And uh -huh. so for me as a primary care physician, um, we have always been aware that I can deliver care and I don't have to be in the same with, room with you to deliver care. And the pandemic, I have, we know that, but we, we proved it to the patients. Okay. Well, you know, we most of us came up old school where we get to sit up on a table and you hit our knee with something and 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 you got to be tactile on our body. Um, but that's not necessarily. <laughs> but do doctors have always known that scientifically um, that is not necessarily delivering care. None of that changes your outcome. It makes the patient feel like we're doing something, which means something to the, it really does mean something. Mm -hmm. But it it doesn't change that discussion about um, what medicine are you taking? What'd you eat for breakfast? Let's go over this, let's go over that. We don't have to be in the room. And the video visit adds things that, cannot be duplicated with me and you in that room. Like I have people turn that video around, open your refrigerator, open your pantry. <laughs> video visits for, for seniors allows daughter, son-in-law, everybody's in the room. So that senior cannot come into the office and tell me what she he wants me to hear. Because daughter is in the background, son-in-law's in the video I get the whole story <laughs> well I've had senior patients say I don't like these video visits I want to come to the doctor because I don't want them here and these video visits the family is like oh no 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 from now on video visits for you we're coming into the office sometimes but uh -huh. from now on so 
That means video visits, daughter-in-law's at work in her office, grandma's at home, they chiming in. And so the video visits have also allowed the whole family to be involved in care and nobody has to be in the same place. Wow. Wow. That's, that's good. But you know, not everybody is willing to do that. Not everybody is willing to well, do that. Like you said. A lot of people are when they find that people will do things when they see the value it brings to them and how it benefits them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people will do it when it's convenient for them, when they find the value in it. Mm. And it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. When somebody finds the value in it, when somebody finds that they can have a video visit with me, you know, every other visit, mm -hmm. that's what they want. And we don't, for a lot of people at this point, you know, we still have an office. We still have a lot of people are, it's flipped. Do I have to come into the office next time? No, you don't, Miss Jones. Don't. It's flipped. They don't want to come in, and it's 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 flipped to. Do I have to come in the vis into the office next time? Ah, uh, yes, you do because uh -huh. I want to get your feet. I want to do your diabetic foot exam. So it's flipped. Uh -huh. because it's convenient that appointment. They don't have to get in their car. Battle traffic. Get in that car. At yeah, I I would prefer I would prefer video visits, but yeah, it's it's um <laughs> that's that's funny. Yeah, I, I and I do I have doctors now that I can email or you know or call up, but they also want to know about my blood pressure and um or whatever the question is. There's like this part that is like okay you got to go in for this we got to at least say we're monitoring well i if you have high blood pressure you should be checking your especially if you're taking medication you should be checking your blood pressure every day um uh, seniors know how seniors don't write the seniors off they know how to work this phone they know how to work they know how to get on these patient portals they put their blood pressures in there the seniors are doing better than the people have their age they are very engaged a lot of them are very engaged and they check their blood pressures they put their blood pressure readings in the patient portal um yeah it's all about empowering patients to do home self-care, home self-monitoring. So if, if your blood pressure starts, I tell people, if your blood pressure is going up and your blood sugar starts to go up, I want you to know first. Okay. But if you're not checking every day, how are you going to know? Okay. I, well, so true. So true. So true. So, okay. So you you so pandemic started and you left john hopkins so yes i left johns hopkins and so now i'm doing two things i um have started um with a company called forward that has um brick and mortar offices in 15 cities um so they do have doctors in offices but it's it's a membership um, a primary care practice, 15 cities, but they also started a new service line and I am a virtual only physician with forward. And so I have licenses in, in, in multiple states, including five states that forward has, um, offices in. And so I do the, um, I do the intake for the new patients, but I also do follow-up visits. And a big part of my what I do is weight management, following up on blood pressure, following up on diabetes management, all kinds of things, anxiety, same thing that I always do, but it's virtual. Um, but a lot of things I follow up on, you know, you got to go into the office 
scheduling appointments. Okay, you're going to follow up in the office for this. So this you need to go into the office for. And so we're opening up. We have a DC office, but we're opening up five new brick and mortar offices in the DC area that very soon. And we have a lot of new incoming patients. So a lot of people do not have insurance. A lot of people do. A lot of people are using their um, HSA money, FSA money. Um, but it's actually people, a lot of people have high inductible, high deductibles. So there, it, it actually doesn't, the subscription, it doesn't cost that much. So if you look for forward, just type in Google forward health. If you put forward health or go forward.com, you can see all the offices and how much it costs. But I think, I think for some memberships, it's $99 a month or maybe $149.99 a month. People pay a lot more for other stuff. And so a lot of people use it as an adjunct to their own primary doctor. A lot of times people say they like forward, they, because we do the weight management and, you know, because it's a subscription, you know, there's no limit on, um, you know, you can get in faster. We spend more time with you. Um, as a part of your membership, you get your blood drawn, your baseline labs done. Um, we do stuff in the office for you. We have vaccines. Um, so a lot of stuff is with your membership. So that's my everyday day to day. But I also started my own consulting with the Vios Clinic. That's the platform that I'm using. It's called the Vios Clinic, V-I-O-S-S. -S. And if you go on the Vios Clinic um, website under clinics, and then you'll see my name and click on my name. That is um, what I have started on the side. And I have multiple licenses. So currently I can see patients in the state that the patient is in. So I still have my Ohio license. So I can see patients in the state of Ohio. Um, and so I have gotten started with seeing patients um, for consultation. So I have called it virtual cons medical consultation, consultation, helping people with lifestyle management. Um, because a lot of times people can't get into their primary care doctor, see their doctor, can't get appointments, but every three months need to spend more time, need help with lifestyle management, what to eat, what not to eat, explaining their medicines. Um, I can help people um, with helping people lose weight. Um, I, I can't, because I have a license in Ohio, I can prescribe medicine. Um, but my goal with the consultation is not to really take over your primary care, is mm -hmm. to supplement the care that you're getting. Um, but if you don't have a primary care doctor, I can do that. Um, but, and, and so but you, but it, you know, so I would evaluate somebody to decide, you know, you got to pick somebody or give you information about if you don't have insurance, what to do, uh -huh. but, you know, point you in the right direction. But I, you know, I can consult and say, go over your medical history and tell you what's what tell you where to start. Um, but for a lot of people, their medical issues are lifestyle related. So, okay. So now, cause I want to, I want to talk about that lifestyle related, but, but for a second, um, you still have um, good relationships with a do lot of doctors here in uh, in Ohio. Oh yeah. In Cleveland, Northeast in Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, cause I know when I posted up that I'd be talking to you today, um, my friend, Larry. I up, saw that. As, uh, I saw that Larry. <laughs> I was like, Oh, doctor, why couldn't he just say former instead of using the word? Oh, <laughs> nothing old about you, but it, it is, um, I, I think that a lot of times 
what I'm seeing now more than ever is this brain fog. Is that is that like when people act like they don't know what the heck, which way is up, is that a result of long COVID or, or what is that about? It makes me worried that people can't even articulate what's going on with them. I don't know if that's, is that, a, is that new? Oh, it's, it's not new? I, I don't think that's new. Maybe I'm just too. seeing it more. I don't know if you mean that people can't articulate what's going on with them. I don't think that's, that's not anything new. I think just people just, they just don't know. And you just have to find a doctor who can listen to what you're, the person is saying and try and, try and know how to kind of try and get it out of you. <laughs> but that comes with training and, you know, trying to meet the person where they're at. But people don't always have the words to express what they're feeling. And that really comes with the skill of the doctor to try and communicate with the person to try and get them to use their words to explain what it is they're feeling. Is that what you mean by brain fog? Um. I I suppose so. Um, yeah, because it just to me sometimes it just seems like um, yeah. I I just see so many people who um, seem to have checked out, and I don't know. Like you mentioned anxiety earlier, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if it is. Um, depression it, it could be or something else that that has them in that space of like I don't know like you know like they don't know what's happening sometimes I gotta ask questions like that I'm not gonna use the word anxiety or depression because for many people that those words don't mean anything either you gotta ask people about how they feel Mm. Um, but a lot of people um, use to use your word check out when they're not coping with what's going on mm. in their life or in the world for that matter mm -hmm. I have a lot of people who I just have to tell them stop watching the news Stop watching the news. Stay off the internet, please. Yes. And honestly, when they do that, they feel better. That's the, that's their medicine. Yes, yes, yes. Some people do sit there and watch. It's on, <laughs> well, it's an endless news cycle and they watch and they watch and they get scared. They're scared to go out of the house. They're scared of their own shadow. It's so much. Yes, yes. I, yeah. Look, it came from Dr. Cole. She's saying that. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean be reckless, Ohio, because I keep track of what's going on with Ohio. Um, and let me put my plug in. You're not smarter than a virus. Nobody is. Mm -hmm. Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People want to pretend that viruses don't exist. Chill. It was chill listening. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't heard. <laughs> I've been on this show too. Uh, viruses have been on this planet long before we got here. They'll be here long after we're gone. And it looks like we ain't going to be here too much longer with the way we going. Mm. After I just told you to stop watching the news. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that doesn't mean be reckless and just pretend like you know it, the environment doesn't exist so you do still have to think um but you have to, just like you we all got to make choices and i think the pan and remember the world has seen many 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 pandemics we this is not the first time human beings have had to deal with 
microorganisms that we can't see. The most important mm -hmm. organisms on this planet are is not us. <laughs> so this pandemic has kind of cut us down to size again. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you're you not know. as important as you think you are. So uh -huh. just it's just it just put things into per perspective but live your life uh -huh. and let's make better choices and back to what i do let's start with making better choices about what we eat uh -huh. and so i was on a call with some sorority sisters about educating people in our cohort and you know the subject came up it was um doctors in our group and the subject came up about food deserts and social injustice and if you can get in your car and wait 30 minutes in the line at chick-fil-a you never turn the car off so your gas is running you could have spent whatever time and money that you did doing that to drive to a grocery store and buy you some vegetables you can't and I have, you know, when I do video visits and I have people open up their refrigerators across a wide range of socioeconomic statuses, it's vegetables in there, but that's not what you eat. Mm. So the vegetables, see, I'm dealing condiment. with, huh? It's a condiment. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm dealing with individuals as a doctor. I'm not dealing with populations. Mm -hmm. But it's regardless of where you are in life, there's things that you can do to improve what you're eating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we use the term food deserts. I don't call them food deserts. I'll call them healthy food deserts. Yes, it's plenty of food. It's just what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, really true. But, you know, it, it's a thing. I'm not saying it's not a thing. But I see what we spend our money on. Well, I, I think that it goes into psychology too, you know, because um, when when it comes down to people will call certain things comfort foods or people will think about the foods that they eat that have status to them, you know, I don't know what that's about, but... Um, Nothing. Huh? nothing nothing not when they talking to me it nothing <laughs> so i mean it's like um, when your arteries are clogged up <laughs> yeah but but there has been so when you talk about lifestyle it's a a total lifestyle change for so many people who have grown up um with the milk and the cheese and the meats and and you know mcdonald's or or wherever it is that people you know in their minds they think i'm gonna treat myself to <laughs> and it's just so when i when i get into um lifestyle and helping people manage their weight because so many of us are over the weight that we should be at and a lot of people are often in denial about that but at the point you're talking to me you got a blood pressure issue you got a cholesterol issue you got a glucose issue you can't just keep burying your head in the sand about it that's why they're talking to me for uh, for a lot of reasons um so it's at that point it's not just about the number on the scale it's about managing chronic conditions or preventing them from getting worse at that point i'm telling you that you have signs that this is this is going to be a problem um it's about changing your relationship with food because, and it's, it's, it's not that easy because you can quit smoking. You don't need to smoke to live. You can quit alcohol. You don't need to drink alcohol to live, but you have to eat to live. So it's not that easy because you still have to eat. 
but it's about what you eat when you're eating. And then we use, and I see people over the course of my career, I see people from all over the world, all cultures, especially in the DMV, but even in Cleveland, at Cleveland Clinic, there's people from all over the world coming and people from all over the world, all countries, all cultures, everybody has the foods that I'm telling them not to eat. So it's everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's, it's the break room is, is parties, is social events, is everything we do, there's food in it. And that's on top of stress eating and the comfort foods and just oh football season every Sunday you gotta have this you got and you know well social events going to parties and clubs and and everything there's food (laughs) and it's never anything healthy it's a whole lifestyle and so I have to work with people and teach people how do you gotta you gotta manage that? And so one thing I will just say, you know, for social events, because it's getting into the holiday season, whatever that means, um, eat before you go. Then they'll be eating twice. No, they no, you won't. <laughs> because <laughs> if you if you eat before you go, you're not gonna be hungry. Your stomach. So you got to, you got to get rid of, you got to get rid of the hunger thing. So you're not, that way you can nibble and eat, but you're not going to eat as much of the bad stuff. If you eat a healthy something at, eat your meal before you go, and then you can nibble and then, then you won't get sucked into the, you ain't going to eat none of my potato salad. You got a little thing of her potato salad. And so so, and you're going to eat a whole lot less wherever you are, mm. or you're not going to eat, mm. you're not going to buy, you're not going to be at the football game and buy all that, what you would have normally eaten if uh-huh. you're, you have already eaten. So that's the, it works. Try it. Uh-huh. Before you go to any social event where there's going to be food, eat something healthy at home. Hmm. Well, I, I, I certainly hope that that works. I know when I used to do it, I would eat before I went because I was always, I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm always afraid that people are not going to have anything that I eat. And so I would either eat before I went or take something with me. And, um, and then I still find something like, oh, I'll just have a little bit of this. Yeah. yeah but you eat less of it though. Yeah, that may be true. I may eat less of it. Yeah, but it's still just, um, yes, we graze. People graze. <laughs> just like, you know, like going to find that. But now, so so there's smart eating like you're proposing. And then you see a lot of people that diet and they seem to go on this yo-yo thing up and down. Um, it, it, so when, <laughs> when, when you talk about this idea of a subscription, do they, can they call you and say, doctor, help, I'm at a location and I, I don't know what I should eat here. Look at this. I mean, what are the parameters around how much contact people have with you and um, and this idea about dieting? What is, you know? So keep that forward and even in my whole career. And um, I will give a shameless plug now. I started writing a book piece by piece over the last 10 or 15 years. And I kind of finalized it in what, 2021? I'm working on getting it published. So if anybody out there knows how to get a book published, let me know. I am on Facebook. It's called, my um, website is Best Best Health for Your Life Consulting, LLC. That's my business page. Um, I'm on Instagram. 
Um, I don't use the word. Diet is a four letter word for me. I don't use it. In my whole 200 plus page book, that word is not in it. Because diet implies temporary. What I'm talking about is making sustainable lifestyle changes. So I don't, I don't teach people how to diet. Um, I teach people how to eat for life because that's what that's what you're doing. You're using food as medicine. Or it'll kill you. One way to do it. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta pick a team. <laughs> yeah. Which one are which one are you gonna pick? And to answer the second part of your question, as far as the consulting and how much access, um, you know, my current my current consulting is appointments. Um, I what I am currently doing as far as consulting is is not concierge medicine. That's concierge medicine is when you have your doctor's actual cell phone number. And a lot of a lot of doctors have switched to concierge medicine where they have a finite set of patients. Maybe they have 100 patients and 200 patients and you pay that doctor a certain amount of money per year and you have 24 seven access to that doctor. Mm. And that's what concierge and medicine is. Yeah. And a lot of doctors have switched to that and are doing very well. Okay. Uh, but you make an appointment, make an appointment with you. Yeah, mine is right now. Um, I'm not saying I'll never do that. But right now, mine is consulting. And my goal is to help people, empower people to um, help themselves and manage themselves. So in 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 your scenario, it's I, I would tell somebody, get a little notebook, get a little journal, journal every day what's going on with you. And we can meet, you know, every two weeks. Let's go over your challenges over the last two weeks and let's, you know, that kind of thing. That's how I would handle that situation. So, you know, you don't have to be in the grocery store and call just write it down and let's go over it. I encourage people to journal every day, always. And then, you know, somebody like me consulting, I have time to go over that. Even with forward, I tell people to journal and write down. I have more time to do that because we have more time and you have more access to us and making more appointments when you have the membership and subscription services. Mm -hmm. So are they journaling about life issues or journaling about food choices or just everything? What, what is that? You, you can write down whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Talk to your doctor about it. Because everything that's going on in your life can impact your health. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can say, this stuff, let's get you to a therapist. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I, I know people who struggle, um, with this, um, with the diet things. And I know you said you don't say diets, but nowadays it seems like, um, social media is everybody's got a, um, some kind of solution. And, um, so whether you're, people are talking about keto diets or protein diets, or, you know, this diet or that diet or what you do to, there are so many things that people get caught up in and the, and trying to say to somebody that those things themselves cause issues that it just goes in one ear and out the other, because that's what they've always done. So here's the deal about the if strict keto diet. So a strict keto, so first of all, a lot of times people don't even know what a, a real keto diet is. So a strict keto diet means you can eat all the fat that you want and no carbs. 
So that means all the fat that you want and no sugar, no starches. So you will lose weight like that, but your cholesterol go up. Um, you clog up your arteries. So I've had people do strict keto diets. They lose weight, but then their cholesterol profile is terrible. So keto diet was really came about to help really obese people lose weight quickly before they needed a surgery that the surgeons knew they were going to need, whatever the surgery was. Because when you're really, really, if you're, if you're obese, a lot of times the surgeons don't like to operate on you You because you're a surgical risk and they don't want to operate on you and you're going to have a complication or worse be during or after your surgery. So they, 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 um, physiologically, they can tell you what to eat to get the weight off, to get your weight down. So you're, you know, you live through your surgery and afterwards. So that's really what that keto diet is. I mean, people know it as Atkins. Mm. So Atkins is not healthy. It's not, it never was meant to do indefinitely. Yes, you will lose weight, but it's not healthy and it was never meant to be permanent. So that is what keto is. Mm. Okay. But, so I never tell anybody to do keto. Healthy eating, now people will say modified keto, but you ask 10 people what that means and you get 10 different answers. Healthy eating in general. Now, if you're diabetic, so I'm going to make a statement, but if you're diabetic, I would have to modify what I'm about to say. But in general, healthy eating is eating fresh food so fresh fruit fresh vegetables as as much as you can um avoiding cooking food at home avoiding the sweetened beverages what drink water water unsweetened beverages as much as you can and if you're going to do meat chicken turkey fish that's baked and broiled not fried, avoiding fast food, obviously restaurant food, frying things, eat, uh, processed things like bacon, sausage, ham, cold cuts, deli meats, hot dogs, all that's processed. Even turkey bacon, turkey products, it's still processed things. So things in a can, things in a box, things in a package, obviously are the chips and the salty snack, all that. So if you could stick to really the fresh fruit, fresh vegetables. And if you're going to do meat, chicken, turkey, and fish. And I tell people, just stay away from the cow. Just let it go. <laughs> and that that is healthy eating. And that now, includes cheeses and milk. Cow, right? Yes. <laughs> and as far as egg, it's the yellow part of the egg that's high in the fat and cholesterol. So if you're going to do eggs, egg whites but the thing is for a lot of people they don't plan to eat you really do have to plan to eat so you when you get up in the morning you should know what you're going to eat and when so that's what I mean by lifestyle most people just wing it they just get up and food just comes into their life however and that if you're trying to lose weight you have to plan to eat mm -hmm. uh, so that's why it's a lifestyle thing. And then to go a step further, you got you got to start logging your food. It, I think the best one is my fitness pal. I don't have any stock in my fitness pal. Don't know who owns it. The other one that people use is lose it. And the reason why we tell people to use those is because they have a huge database and it's really easy to find what you're eating. So that comes that comes with putting in the food that you're eating, which includes how much you're eating. And the really reason why it's good to start logging your food, because then you'll see what's in it. Because mm. a lot of times you're eating stuff. So just when you go to Chick-fil-A, everything on Chick on, on every restaurant that you can think of, it's on the menu because somebody has eaten it and put it in my fitness pal or lose it. Just just 
for one day, just eat how you usually eat at whatever restaurant you go to, put in what you just ate and see what it is. For a lot of people, that changes what they want to eat because once you see how many calories and fat and salt is in what, and cholesterol is in what you're eating, for a lot of people that motivates them to change what they're eating because without logging your food and something that tells you what's in it right then. And a lot of these websites for these restaurants, if you go on the website, it's there. Chipotle, everything you, when you go on Chipotle, before you go in, you know what you're going to order. Go on Chipotle's website and click, 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 click what you put in your bowl. It'll calculate it for you. <laughs> McDonald's, all these restaurants, they have their nutrition facts. Mm. And it's all in these, you know, in, the, in these apps. Mm -hmm. Look how many calories. So in order to, and I'll say this, you know, the body is, it is, it's like a machine. So if you're trying to lose weight, you got to look what you're putting in first. So yeah. it's a whole, it's the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And I'll say this. If you don't change your eating habits, you won't lose weight. You can exercise every day, all day long. I don't, I hardly, I really don't talk to people much about exercise because if you don't change your eating habits, it's not going to matter. Hmm. Uh, and there's all kind of benefits to exercise, but specifically about losing weight, you have to change the food. Mm. So, um, yeah, and we see, uh, so I see people who, um, who do go on diets and then go on vacation and it's like, uh, I don't know what that's about. It's like all bets off. I don't know, but um, that it's an endless cycle. And I think that that's one of the reasons why the diet industry is so huge. People, um, people are at a constant struggle. Now, I will tell you that um, I, I went vegan probably about a month ago and um, maybe a little bit more than a month as a result of going to that um, that health symposium. So I've cut out, uh, I was, I actually went to the doctor because I had, um, when I was blowing my nose, it was like, I felt like it was coming out my ear. So it was like, I went to the doctor for all this mucus I was having. And she was writing all these prescriptions, you know, Flonase and Zyrtec and all of this stuff. And I thought, let me just stop eating all this dairy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and now I, when I sneeze, it's like, oh, I sneezed on Wednesday one time. I'm not waking up with all that mucus. I'm not waking up with all that stuff in my system. So yeah, I get this, it, you know, the difference is amazing. It's good. But now making people connect their food with their health is really a whole different story for so many people. I know. Um, that's one big reason why that's a big part of, of what's in my book. Um, and so as a primary care doctor, a lot of what we do is called preventive health, trying to get people to make that connection before the chronic disease is set in. Because once that ball gets to the top of the hill and starts rolling down the hill, it's hard, it's hard to get in front of it. Um, and so that's what the push is for preventive health is trying to make people make that connection and our whole because I was in Egypt back in August mm. and it's like McDonald's and KFC and Cairo yeah I mean so it's a global 
thing. Mm-hmm. And it was people in our group trying to go to KFC and McDonald's. I'm like, what are y'all doing? Well, you came all the way over here and that's what you want to eat. But um, it's just a whole, and as you may know, you know, in this country, the whole beef got milk that's just politics and marketing in the beef industry just fooling you Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna say this this whole thing about giving milk to babies we're the only species that drinks milk from another species Mm. that's not normal yeah yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's a, a young girl uh, right next door who was like, oh, but it hurts. You know, breastfeeding hurts. And so she put her baby on formula. I'm like, mm, okay. There's so many benefits to breastfeeding. And I'm not I'm not a pediatrician. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I went to medical school and did pediatric rotations. So, I, I mean, I know that much. But one big, big benefit to breastfeeding is you give your child all the, your, um, your antibodies and immune system protection. So your child doesn't have so many infections when they're a kid. You're giving so much protection from your body. hmm so, okay, so it's, uh, I gotta, um, I, I know I have to let you go. Um, I appreciate this entire conversation. Um, the ways that people can um, partner, I'm gonna use the word partner because that uh, sounds like mm-hmm. a little bit more of what you're doing now. Partner with you in dealing with their health is that they can actually contact you um, by going to go forward or forward health. So, yeah, so I am, yeah, so I am, um, go forward. I'm a virtual physician at forward, go forward, um, dot com. And, um, as far as the virtual consultation, uh, is at the Vios Clinic, V-I-O-S-S, um, on um, Facebook, my um, Facebook page is Best Health for Your Life. And then on Instagram, you know, I just said all, I was not a big social media person at all until we I left. Know. I said, I need to, I had a reason to use social media. I don't have a personal reason to do it, but now I, now I have a business reason to do it. Uh, I guess it is personal now. Mm-hmm. on um instagram I'm, I'm looking at it because i can't even remember my handle it's doc b underscore best health for life the number four so i've been posting stuff everything you see on my social media is health related and then obviously i'm on linkedin under my name and i also started a newsletter Yes, you did. I did my second edition. Uh-huh. So you can, everybody can subscribe to my newsletter. Uh-huh. So if, if you go to my um, Facebook page, Best Health for Your Life Consulting LLC. Um, actually, that's the last post that I posted. Um, my last newsletter. Let's talk about high blood pressure. You can go on my newsletter and you can subscribe to my newsletter. I'm going to do it once a month. So my first one I sent out, I think it was August 25th. Um, It was called Let's Talk About Your Health. And the one I just sent out, let's talk about high blood pressure. And I don't know what next month is going to be. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know why diabetes seems like it's like a you think a I should do diabetes you think well, there, there you go 
Yeah, it's it's crazy I did. out here. And for some reason, people at younger and younger ages are having these strokes or whatever it is. I don't know if that's all connected to the diabetes, but it is crazy. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, we got to do something. And also, I got I did I got a website. Um, so I'll plug my Cleveland brother. Um, Tony Lumpkin. There you go. Uh, How do you know? Are you saw it you, on the website? You, no, you mentioned that uh, the other day, and I thought I think I'm friends with him. I need to check him out. Is what I said to myself. So it's um he is um T L Web what's his name? It's T L Web Design, Tony Lumpkin. He did my um website and um you know he did it. It's besthealthforyourlife.com. Mm -hmm. And you can um subscribe to my newsletter on my website. And you can see the first two um, editions of the newsletter on my website. You can also make um, virtual consultation appointments. There's a button to go take you straight to the Vials Clinic on the website and also straight from my newsletters as well. Oh, great. So then and on my blog, on my website, I got a lot of blog articles. So a lot of this stuff that I'm saying. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I put it in blog articles on my website. So I do a lot of writing and I, you know, I'm like, why am I posting all this stuff on Facebook and Instagram? I want to write it how I want to write it because Instagram is only pictures. I can't do anything with pictures <laughs> and Facebook. You got to do it like this. You got, I was like, I need my own platform. And that's, I'm like, I mean, I need a website and then I can, I can display it how I want to display it. Right, right. Good, good, good. <laughs> and so if they, when they go to your website, um, besthealthforyourlife.com, dot com, um, then they can, if, if they, whatever the case may be, once they sign up, you can guide them as to what works best. Oh yeah. For <laughs> you and for them, because I think all on, individualized. on one of them, you have a subscription thing there that they could just automatically buy the subscription, which is a monthly cost is both of them work this a little differently. Right. Um, cause forward so, health has the lab stuff included. Oh yeah. Forward that. has. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, and then um, and the boss is just the consultation piece, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. So, um, so everybody, you you heard it here, um, and this is a great way of um, yeah, of building a relationship with a doctor, um, just like you know, who who can relate to you, your stuff, your community, all of that good stuff, and um, I always appreciate that. Somebody that looks like me. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Beauty and brains. There we go. All right. So thank you so much for um for this. I appreciate you. It's good to see you. <laughs> hey, Ohio. I'm still out here. <laughs> yeah, doing your thing. All right. Well, um, yep, thank you so much. And uh I'll make sure that uh the people get to see this and um yeah, get it out there. Have an amazing day, Benita. All right. Or right, Dr. Co. <laughs> All right. Take All care. Bye-bye. Right. All right. Let's uh let me how do I <laughs> Did that end? Okay, that ended my live stream. Thank you. That was good. Yeah, you get me to talking. I'll just keep going. That was good, though. Um, you know, because I think, because I know so many people, you know how you know folks, and they swear up and down they trying, 
They trying, they trying. And I know, but when I get to digging in, and it's not even really digging in, when I get to the history and <clears throat> I can, it doesn't take very long after talking to them to find out what they're you know, just as me and I don't say it to them, but find out what they're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, for a lot of times it, it can be co corrected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you, then you'll see the results that you want, but it, it's, it's a lifestyle change and you, you have to be consistent with it or you won't see the results that you want. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I was telling Dr. Brown about a cousin of mine who, you know, she was breaking the news to me that she was going to um, go into pal palliative care. Okay. And I was like, girl, have you tried everything? And she was like, what do you mean? I did what my doctor told me. And I was like, well, um, I said, what, what are you? So I asked her about her diet because she was talking about all of this, like she was in the hospital because she couldn't breathe. And I asked her what you, what's she eating? Oh, the only meal now she's 90 some pounds now, right? And she says the only meal that she can keep down is her breakfast. And she says, I have three pieces of bacon, two eggs, a bagel with some cream cheese. And she's naming off all of this stuff. And I said, all of that stuff is killing you. <laughs> I mean, but so, but she says that she's been eating fatty stuff because she's so, her weight is so bad. And but that's not going to make her no. Yeah. I was like, but you just, you just eating stuff that on one end, you trying to gain some weight and on the other end, it's making you not breathe. Man. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what people need help. Get these messages from. So <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, ma'am. I'm gonna get right. to do my uh do my uh other piece, my my all note. right. All right, have an amazing day. Tell your husband I say hey. All right. All right, take all care. Right. Bye. Bye.